So one of the biggest questions I get when I tell people that I drive an electric vehicle is where do you charge it? Because people are so used to driving gas cars now that it's almost ingrained into our brains that we're going to a gas station to go fuel up. But with an electric vehicle, you don't have to do that. So where do you charge these vehicles? It's a pretty common misconception that there aren't a lot of EV charging stations, which is not true at all. There's actually a lot of them. They're just not right off the side of the road like we see gas stations. And they don't have giant signs uh, protruding above the road with the prices on them. They're typically at the back of parking lots or hidden away so that these vehicles can be sitting there charging out of the way and not obstructing anybody else's parking spots. But that is not where most people charge. They typically charge at home. So if people do have an electric vehicle, they'll usually install a charging station at home. This can be as simple as just plugging into a 120 volt outlet or as advanced as having a whole station installed in your garage. It all kind of depends on how much you drive every day and what you want out of a home charger. Probably the second most popular option and what I do actually is charge at work. So we've got chargers uh, over a dozen actually at my office so I can plug in there during the day and have plenty of charge uh, when I leave in the evening. And lastly are those public chargers that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. And those are definitely, I think, the least popular for people on a day-to-day -day basis. But they're used all the time for people on road trips and that do a lot of traveling. Or for people that might not have access to a charger at home or work. And this is a great option for people that might be traveling a long distance to go shopping or reach some destination that they're visiting for the day. For example, I took a trip up to the outlets in Sunbury, Ohio, and and it's about a 45 minute to an hour drive and luckily they had charging stations there and I don't have a home charger so I was actually able to plug in there while I was shopping and get a little bit of a charge so I had enough to get home. So those chargers that we usually see at shopping malls and grocery stores or kind of destinations that people are going to are typically level two chargers and I'll get into the speeds of charging a little bit later. Uh, but those aren't as fast as the fast chargers you need for long distance travel. That's where Tesla comes in with their supercharger network. Electrify America has a really good network as well, but these charger car are extremely fast and are usually right off the highway. So you can pull off, charge real quick, maybe grab a bite to eat, go to the bathroom, and you're good to go. Another piece of this puzzle are the destination chargers, and I actually did a whole video about a road trip I took a couple weekends ago. I'll have that link down below, but I traveled during the day. I didn't need to stop the charge at all during my road trip up to the hotel, but the hotel did have destination charging, so I was able to plug in there overnight and get a full charge so that I have enough to return the following day. These are definitely important on shorter road trips when you're not gonna stop in between uh, your starting point and your destination so that you have a place to charge when you arrive. So those are just the different locations that these chargers are available, but there's also different charging speeds depending on where you're plugged in and what type of charger you're plugged into. And the easiest way to explain this is with different levels of charging. So let's start with level one. This is where you plug in to a regular wall outlet. It's also known as trickle charging because it happens so slowly. You're basically just getting a trickle charge from the outlet. And charging speeds are extremely slow. I've only seen up to about five miles of range added per hour, which is really slow but it's good to use in a pinch if you are parked somewhere overnight and you don't have any place to charge. I use this when I visit my parents' house in Indianapolis. I just plug it in the garage there and let my car charge while it's sitting there because typically I'm not doing a lot of driving when I'm spending time with family. So the level one chargers are usually included with the car. Most cars have just something to plug into a regular wall outlet. And I always keep this in my trunk in case I'm in a pinch and need to plug in somewhere. If we move up to a level two, this is typically what you see at those shopping malls and grocery stores and work charging. And these are sometimes what people have installed in their garages. Uh, these are a lot faster than trickle charging, but still in the grand scheme of things, a medium speed charging. You're typically able to get a full charge in just a few hours. Definitely not fast enough to use on a road trip when you just wanna pull over and stop for a few minutes, but it is great if you are stopped for a few hours and you're, you've reached your destination, can just leave your car parked for a little bit. On my car, I typically add about 25 miles of range per hour. So again, not very fast, but enough to get you a full charge over the course of a few hours. And that brings us to level three, also known as DC fast charging. So while levels one and two use alternating current to charge the car and actually go through the charger in the car to convert that to DC and charge the battery, DC fast charging puts current directly into the battery. This means you can charge it extremely fast and get your car fully charged in under an hour. Typically on road trips, I don't stop for more than 30 minutes to charge my car up, and this is plenty of time to grab a quick bite to eat, use the restroom, 
and head back to my car and by that time it's good to go. So Tesla supercharger network as well as other DC fast charging networks fall in this category and I typically see speeds of over 100 miles of range added per hour which is insanely fast. I've seen over 500 on my car and with Tesla's new V3 supercharging it can actually go up to over a thousand miles of range added per hour which is just insane. So that brings us to the different charging connectors, which can get a little bit confusing, but if you just know what your car is compatible with, that is all you need to know. You don't need to know every other car and what it's compatible with. So I'm gonna use my car as an example, and if you follow me, you know that I own a 2020 Model 3. So for level one charging, this is actually included with the car and included with most EVs. You have a charging cable inside the car. You can just plug into a regular 120 volt outlet, and the other end has the adapter necessary for your car and you can just plug it right in. It's as easy as that. Level two charging is definitely where it gets a little more interesting because there are a lot of different connectors on the market. Most of them that I see in the United States are the J1772 plugs and Tesla actually includes an adapter with uh, their charging cable. So you can just put that adapter onto that J plug and plug it in your car doing that. This is actually what I have to use at work every day. We've got J plugs at our offices, so I have to put that on the charger every day before I plug in my car. For level three, I typically use the supercharger network, so I don't have to worry about adapters at all. I just plug it in when I get to the supercharger location. There are some other adapters I could get for my car, but for now, just using that single J plug adapter is working fine for me. There are lots of apps out there that make this process really easy to help you find chargers. The one I use probably the most is PlugShare. You can put in all of your vehicle information in there. It knows what kind of connector you have on your car and it can match you with chargers around you that will, are compatible with that connector. So for people that don't own electric vehicles, this can be a bit overwhelming, but I've found that once you kind of find your charging routine on a day-to-day -day basis, it makes things very simple. I, for example, I drive to work every day. I attach the adapter to that plug at work. I plug it in my car and I let it sit there throughout the day, and by the time I leave, I'm charged up enough to do my commute the next morning. On road trips, I typically use the Tesla supercharger network, and I'll find chargers near my destination so that I know where to plug in when I get there. So definitely on a weekly basis, just my everyday charging life is very simple. The only time it gets a little bit complicated is on those road trips, but there are lots of apps out there to help you with that. I actually just discovered one. It's called A Better Route Planner, and this can actually help you plan your charging route throughout your road trip. I do like using Tesla's navigation system to plan out my route, but it only looks for Tesla chargers, but the Better Route Planner app will actually consider all kinds of chargers so that you're not limited to Tesla's supercharger network. So if you're considering an electric vehicle, I hope some of this helps you out a little bit. I know charging can be a little bit confusing if you are new to it, but it's actually really simple once you start to learn a few things. But if you're still in the dark about some things, definitely leave me a comment down below. I'd love to answer any questions you might have about EV charging or even my specific charging situation. But that about wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.